All right, guys, you have two hours with me, and I'm not there, so I am going to be recording two lessons, so please watch both of them, take notes, and then start your homework. This stuff is to help prepare you for the EOC. On the EOC, there will definitely be some statistics questions, and understanding what those are and what things are in the statistics is super important there. Okay, so let's start off by talking about different ways to display data. So statistics, statistics looks at data. You guys have done stuff with statistics before, like the stuff at the bottom here you probably recognize. But the first thing is a line plot. Sometimes it's called a dot plot, but a line plot is a graph that shows the frequency of data along a number line. It is quick and easy way to organize the data. This one will probably be one of the easier ones for you guys. Basically what this is saying is that there's 630s four thirty fives six thirty seven thirty eight thirty nine so that's thirty eight so two thirty eights um three forties one two three forty three there's a single forty three two forty fives 46, 47, 48, three of those, and it looks like there are five fifties. So basically what this is saying is that this was the data that was originally given to somebody, these numbers all listed together, and they just put it on a number line. When you make a number line for a line plot, it has to be scaled correctly. You'll notice they didn't just list the number 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. They listed every number in between, even though there's no data at 31 or 32. So when you make a number line for a line plot, make sure it is scaled correctly. Um, the next one here that you guys will be looking at are stem and leaf plots, which is another way to show the frequency of the values. The stem is one vertical side and the leaf is the other one. So you'll notice here sometimes it's like a line that's up and down, 2, 1 equals 21. So the data for this one is, this is like the 10 spot, and that's like the 1 spot. So it's 12, 13, tw oh, I missed the one there, 21, 27, 33, 34, 35, 37, 40, 40, and 41. So you'll notice that it just kind of smushes the numbers together, it slices it, maybe makes it a little bit easier to see the frequency of that data there. So these are the ones that you should know. Measures of central tendency, you'll, if you're ever asked to find the measures of central tendency, it means all four of these pieces. So just make sure you're aware that it's all four of those pieces. So the mean, or another name for the mean, is the average of all the numbers. When you add all these numbers up together, and you divide them by the number that there are. So you add all and divide by how many? So if we were doing this one, we would have added 12 plus 13 plus 21 plus 27 plus 33 plus 34 plus 35 plus 37 plus 40 plus 40 plus 41. Hit enter in our calculators and divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And that gives us our average. Our median is the number if the middle of in the middle. So number of the middle, or number in the middle, I guess is what that should say, of an organized data set. When it means by organized data set, it means it was listed from least to greatest. You cannot find the median without listing your data from least to greatest. So it's super important that you realize this. So if I'm finding the middle here, I'm gonna start on both ends and I'm just gonna keep going until I find the middle. So like 34 would be the median of that data. If you have an even number of information though, um, you're gonna have to add the two middle pieces together and divide by two. You're basically taking the average of that. Mode is the number that occurs the most often. So the 40 here is the mode it occurs the most, it occurs twice. And the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest. So like up here we would do 41 minus 12, and that means that the data spans 29. 
so it has a range of 29. So just a quick thing on those there. All right. Next thing. And then we'll start looking at some of the stuff here. Good thing you guys have this as well in front of you because I feel like you can barely see this. Okay. So data can be have four different dis distributions, bell or symmetrical, which means the same thing is that most of the data values occur around the middle of it, which are the closest. So if you're thinking of a bell-shaped curve, this is the middle, you'll see that the tails is what they're called, are about the same. When your tails are about the same, then you have a bell-shaped or a symmetrical curve. Uniform means all of them occur at the same thing, so basically it's saying it's like if you have a set of data, it's all at the same height. And then there are two other things that are the skewness, and hopefully you are reading this off of yours. So this is left skewed. So left skewed has a longer left tail. So if I were to draw this, or if you were to look down here, you'll notice that the tail on this side is way more. More of the data is to the left. That's why it is left skewed. Um, it also means that the mean is to the left of the peak. So the mean, this says mean, is to the left of the peak, and the median is closer to the peak. And we'll talk about why that's going to be important, because sometimes we have to determine what um, is better to use, the mean or the median, and it's going to depend on that skewness there. So if it's right skewed, your distribution is going to be to the... Right, you see how my tail is going to the right more, so it's right skewed. My tail is going to the left more, so it's left skewed. Again, the median is closer to that point and the mean is farther away. And we'll talk about how the skewness affects the data in just a second. So let's just determine this. This is usually everybody's favorite part of the stat stuff because it's the least amount of work. So you draw in your bell and you notice that your tail is longer to the right, so this is right skewed. If you draw in your bell, you'll notice it's pretty even on both sides, so it's bell-shaped or symmetrical. And if you draw in your bell here, you'll notice that there's a longer tail to the left, so this is left skewed. And then finally, they're all about the same height, which makes it uniform. So that is just talking about your skewness. And again, it's just dependent on the tail. You'll notice it's longer to the right, longer to the left. All about the same, bell-shaped. So that's where all that comes from. Okay. This is called a box and whisker, and we'll look at these in a little bit too, but if you do your tail this from the center, so here's your center here, it's actually your median, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Your center, your median, you'll see that your tail is way longer to the right, so this is right skewed. This one is pretty much a perfect bell, so this is bell or symmetrical. Again, we have another bell or symmetrical. The tails are the same on both sides. And then finally, we go from the middle, that median, and we put that the hump there, and we go out, and we see that our tail is longer to the left, so this one is left skewed. So again, it's all based on those tails at the end there. So if they're longer to the right, it's right skewed. If they're longer to the left, it's left skewed. And if they're about even, it's bell shaped or symmetrical. All right, so here's what we're gonna do now. We are gonna talk about the measures of central tendency. So when it tells you to identify the mean, median, mode, and range, these are all measures of central tendency. 
If it ever asks you to find the measures of central tendency, it needs to find all four of those pieces, mean, median, mode, and range. So we're going to take from the stem and leaf plot, we have to write out all of our data. And we have to list it from the least to greatest. The nice thing about the stem and leaf plot is it's already in order. So the stem out front is zero, so that means we have one, one, two, two, three, four, 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 so that's one, two, three, four, okay, good, five, eight, and then we have our stem and our leaf, which makes ten, and I have three of those. I have two elevens, a thirteen, a seventeen, and a nineteen. So now my new stem is twenty, uh, two, so it's twenty something, so I have twenty-five, twenty-five, twenty-seven, twenty-seven, I have two 28s and two 29s. Hopefully not missing any of my data here. So I keep going. And now my stem is a three. So I have a 30, I have three 31s. Three 32s. A 34 and a 35. Then my stem is four, so I'm doing 40s. So I have 40, 44, 48, 49, then I have a 5, so I have 52, 56, 57, 57, and 58, and then I have 63 and 66. So I have all of my data listed from least to greatest, which is important for finding things like our range and our median and other things like that. So you will notice here that when you do this data here, we are going to have to find the mean, which means add it all up and divide how many there are. So I have to count how many there are. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. So whatever I get here, I'm going to have to divide by 47, if I count it right. Let's hope I did. So I have to add them all up now. So I have 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 8 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 11 twice 13 17, 19, 25, 25, 27, 27, 28, 28, 29, 29, 30, 31, three times, oops, that's not 31. and 66. So I have all of those added together and I get 1,235. So I have to take 1,235 and divide that by 47 and I get 26.28. So my mean here is 